student or the student who can't speak English well? Betsy, I think you have asked a very important question, which needs some fine qualification. Some people will say to you, I don't want to lower my standards, but I want you to understand that when students come to your classroom, if you are a teacher, if they do not understand and you say, I'm not going to lower my standards and you're not going to take them where they are, you're not going to do any teaching. So people who insist that adjusting the curriculum always means lowering standards, I don't think have a real knowledge of what curriculum is. I was talking to a biology teacher and he said that he had to gear his education uh, for the Latino students on a lower level because he felt that they were going to be uh, the future factory workers and McDonald hamburger slingers, which with, mm. I thought was totally insane, but that's his point of view. And, and that's, you know, that's just one individual, but you, know, you kind of wonder if there's more people thinking in that, in that way. Yeah, but we have to specify that some of the teachers want to help, and some of the teachers, you know, they're aware of what's going on at Calvin Park. You're learning Spanish then? Yes, I'm trying to learn Spanish. Uh, every day I try to learn at least one phrase, one word. Um, every day students come to me and give me one word. They give me encouragement. Uh, I find it very positive toward my, my teaching ability because people see that I'm concerned. They see that, uh, that I'm... Oh, that I, I not only want to learn more about them personally as, as, as a teacher, uh, but uh, culturally as well. Um, I find that it's very positive to me. It's a challenge to me to be able to be, uh, speak other languages, especially in the terms that I'm teaching people who are Hispanic. We have a special update report Our research and interviews Garcia. helped so us to get a good picture of what was taking place at Kelvin days. Park. Hello. The interviews were that especially kind of valuable things, because yeah. we learned how to handle yeah. ourselves as reporters. Yeah. But the best example and of a learning experience community. was yeah. having to deal yeah. with yeah. adults. Yeah. At one point, we were pulled into the principal's yeah. office to discuss the content of the program. This occurred on the first day of taping inside the school. We weren't just nervous, we were really scared, and it showed when we talked about it later. Mr. Kenny, the assistant principal at Calvin Park, came and found the other two, two other student co-producers, Carmen and Vincent, and myself, and told us that Mrs. Nolan wanted to speak, speak with us. She also had wanted to speak to Stephen Gill, I mean, yeah, but um, they weren't in the building. So we went into her office, and she started <laughs> more or less interrogating us on what the show was going to be about and what what was going to be shown. She wanted to know exactly what we were going to show on, you know, on TV. I don't, she just thought that you were going to show, you know, everything um, against Kelvin Park or something. She asked us what people who watched the show were going to come away with. And I told her that we wanted the people that watched our show to come away with the feeling that um, things are going, you know, there are problems at Calvin Park, but people are trying to solve them. You know, supposedly a rumor was started in the school that we were out to get the teachers and get them fired, you know, asking yeah. them questions so they could hang themselves on TV, you know. <laughs> All sorts of rumors and hassles seemed to follow us as taping began. A teacher observed us taping this scene. He saw that it was redone several times and thought we were staging an assault on a teacher. But he never bothered to find out exactly what it was for or how it was to be used. He didn't take the time to check the facts. What we learned from this particular episode is that teachers, adults, are just as quick to react to rumors and misinformation as students. In that segment, we were making a statement on stereotyping. This is what we had to say. Stereotyping and name-calling together only widen racial barriers that already exist between people. In the following two segments, we will show how one teacher's stereotypes keep her locked out and unable to reach her students, and how stereotyping makes communication between two students almost impossible. This place is a zoo. It used to be a joy to teach here, but not anymore. Since all those Puerto Ricans have infested this place, teaching is impossible. They can't learn anything anyhow. They expect a free education just like a free breakfast and lunch. Look at them. When I try to teach them, they pretend not to understand English. Class is like putting myself on the firing line. All I can look forward to is 40 minutes of combat and aggravation. If it weren't for those Latinos, everything would be as it should be. 
God, I can't wait for retirement. Open the door! It won't open. Well, try it. Open the door. It can't open. Oh. It won't. We didn't try and kill anybody. We didn't tell. We didn't try and uh, bury anybody with our program. We tried. We, all we tried to do was tell the truth, and I think we did it. And we have found that the Latino students here at Collin Park have brought some unique cultural differences, which the administration and faculty were not equipped or prepared to handle. Also, that the administration here at Collin Park has been slow in responding to the needs of the new and growing majority. What happened at the school is, is you can judge by what happened to us. Before we came onto the, uh, into this project, we weren't really conscious of what was happening there either. And then we started asking questions that raised our consciousness of what was happening and also raised everybody else's. I think it might also help the school, school's reputation. Yeah. And the uh -huh. fact that people, you know, like before I went to Calvin, oh, Calvin, they got this bad and that bad. And yeah, now, as we, as we show it, you know, of course there are bad points. Every school has its bad points, but at the same time there are good points, mm -hmm. which we should you know, how can I put it, they should make a big deal of the good points rather yeah. than the bad points constantly. And it'll kind of take away some of the doubts people had about the school. Yeah, because Kelvin Park has had some bad things said about it. Like We had frustrating and frightening things. moments. Yeah, to put our program together to took a lot of hard work and hassles. Was it worth it? Uh, what I learned from the program is that uh, steps are being made uh, to uh, desegregate the schools, but uh, a lot more has to be done, and and there should be a lot more push from the people inside of schools. Well, Cullen Park has to change. It, it has to get out of the prehistoric times that it's in. There's more to life than school, and that you have to look for that. Um, I've also learned, really, what desegregation means, and that just because you have desegregation, it doesn't mean that you have integration, and I think that's important. I think everybody should know that, or should at least have the chance to find that out. Carrie, as a white student at Kelvin Park, do you find that the Latino majority has caused you any special problems? No, there's been no problems. And do you feel being a white student on the varsity basketball team, having a white coach, do you feel that he favors you at all? No, no, I've sat down quite a few times on the bench. Working on this program has given me an, um, like a different outlook on different careers and for example I, did, I never knew there were so many fields you know in television or that um, you know there are so many problems going on in this world that we could try to do something about. The weather outlook for the year 2000 is continued growth and we hope an upward swing towards better education and job opportunities with the possibility of clear skies but now back to our current environmental conditions and Gil Diaz. Uh, thank you, Carmen. As I was saying about the 59%, they have brought about certain problems and some unique advantages. In these few minutes, we will look into the Latino majority here at Calvin Park and the educational changes which have occurred as a result of the new and growing majority. When I first was this program was introduced to me, oh, this, what in the world does that mean? Desegregation or integration? I go. I've heard them on TV and the news, I never really knew what they meant, and now I know what it means, and I mean, it really, I, I like the idea of making an effort to try and make people, you know, bring desegregation and integration together, but because the way everything is, you know, everyone's got their own ideas, and not to say that, not, not, that nobody wants to help desegregate and integrate schools, but I think not just the schools should be worked on, I think everyone in general, you know, starting with the little kids, because that's where you start, you know. But I'm glad it's working, in, you know, we're trying with high schools, and I think it's working, but not, not probably not as much as it really should, but starting with the children, I think, because the children, you know, once they realize, hey, man, I don't, I don't, I don't have to ignore you because you're a different color. And what I've learned is that both sides are the same, but both want to communicate, but they're like stereotypes and their beliefs and their, uh, as Gil said, you know, the way they're brought up and everything, this prejudices, you know, just blocks them off from, the all, from everybody else. Stereotyping often begins with name-calling, a harmless but still dehumanizing way of putting someone down. For example, at Kelvin Park, we sometimes hear the term wetback applied to Mexicans, pork chops to Puerto Ricans, 
communist to Cubans, and white boy to Anglos. But with stereotyping, there is a more harmful, destructive element working. It is a negative label used to describe someone because of their race or ethnic background. Stereotyping and name calling together only widen racial barriers that already exist between people. Uh, Kelvin Park in, in an extremely fair, fair light. I mean, we did so much research and uh, we checked out our facts, you know, inside out. We know that we presented a clear picture. <laughs> Thank you.